So in this video, we're moving uh, through our probability distributions. We're looking at a particular type of distribution here called a binomial distribution. Um, now, a hint about how the binomial distribution works is here in the word by meaning to. Um, let's take a look through some binomial distribution stuff. Uh, the hardest part is probably in the definition itself. Uh, once you start doing some of the questions, it, it starts to make a lot more sense. So if the first couple of minutes of this video or even this whole video doesn't make a whole lot of sense, don't be too concerned. Take lots of notes, listen carefully, and then um, try some of the questions and you, you, it should start to make more sense. Okay, uh, for a distribution to be defined as a binomial distribution, each of the following characteristics must be satisfied by the trials. Okay, question one. N independent trials must be conducted. N is just a number. So a certain number, certain number of, and it says independent trials. Now those independent trials mean that one trial does not affect the other trial. Uh, so for instance, so if I was pulling cards out of a deck of cards, but I wasn't putting them back. The probabilities change as I move through the deck. So for instance, if I pull the Ace of Hearts out now, and then I leave that aside, the probability of pulling an Ace out of the deck has changed with my next trial. In binomial distributions, however, they're independent trials. So the, the Previous trials don't affect the future trials. So there's always replacement. If I pull that ace of ace of clubs out, I better put it back in again before I do my next trial. So N independent trials must be conducted. Now this one is important. Only two possible outcomes must exist for each trial, success and failure. So there can only ever be two options, but those two options we can define. We can define them as sex, success and and failure. Uh, so it doesn't mean that there can only be two possible outcomes, but it means that we're only interested in two possible outcomes. Uh, for instance, um, if we've got a dice here, we might define success as getting a six, and we might define failure as getting anything else. Okay, so you can see that even though there's six options on a dice, I've boiled it down to success or failure. Six is a success, I win. Everything else is a failure. And this brings me to my third point. The probability for success, P, is fixed for each trial. It doesn't change, which is what we were talking about with the replacing cards. And the probability of failure, Q, is given by Q equals 1 minus P. Okay, so a bit of terminology first. Success is P. Failure is Q. That's just the... Um, that's always the case. That's just our mathematical um, conventions. Now, you can see here that failure is equal to 1 minus success. So, in other words, um, the probability of success and the probability of failure add up to 1. So P plus Q equals 1. It means that we've used all of the options from what's going to happen. So for instance, it wouldn't be a binomial distribution if we defined success as a 6 and failure as a 5. Uh, because the probability of success would be 1 in 6, the probability of failure would be 1 in 6, and they'd add up to 2 in 6. So success and failure both need to add up to 1. It needs to cover all of our options completely. Now, a binomial distribution question might look something like... Uh, or Actually, before we get into a full binomial distribution question, we need to talk about combinations. Combinations. Now, combinations can be def can be defined in layman's terms as how many different ways can something happen. Okay, so if we're dealing with my dice here, my 6 and my not a 6, uh, how many different ways can something happen? So the question I might ask, I'll just use a different colour here. So the question might be, uh, if I roll 
the dice four times how many different ways can I get exactly two successes? That is two sixes. Okay, if I roll the dice four times, how many different ways can I get exactly two successes? So just without drawing anything so far, I can give you one example of a way that you can get two successes. So you can roll the dice and get a six, and then roll the dice again and get a second six, and then roll the dice again and get a four, and then a th roll the dice the last time and get a three. You've had exactly two successes there. Your first two rolls were successes. Your last two rolls were failures. You've had exactly two successes. Now, a way that we can figure this out is with a tree diagram. Success, failure. That's my first roll of the dice. Either it was a success or a failure, a six or a not a six. Success, failure. Success, failure. Success, failure. This is my third roll of the dice here. Um, okay. I'll make you watch all the way through this. I was contemplating pausing it, but probably important that you guys have a think about how to draw tree diagrams, even though you probably won't be doing it that much. Okay, there's our tree diagram. We need to know exactly how many different ways can I get exactly two successes. Now let's just go through it and start marking them one by one. Now you can see this uppermost one here. It's success followed by success followed by success followed by success. That's four sixes in a row. Very unlikely, but if that was to happen, we wouldn't have gotten exactly two successes. So that's not something I'm looking for. Here we've got success, 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 failure. That's three successes. That's too many. Success, success, failure, success. It's hard to say success that many times fast. Three successes, no deal. Success, success, failure, failure. That was the one we talked about. That one's good. Success, failure, success, success. That's three successes. No good. Success, failure, success, failure. That one's good. Um, success, failure, failure, success. That one's good. Success, failure, failure, failure. No good. Three failures. Okay, let's go through it really quickly. Uh, failure, success, success, success. That one's no good, but the one below it is. Failure, success, failure, success. That one's good. Three failures here, no good. Two failures, two successes. That one's good. Uh, and nothing else is going to work for us. Okay, let's count them up. We have... One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different ways here. Six different ways to get exactly two successes from four trials. Now this would count for dice or or, or cards or um, or dice like we've just done here. If I roll the whatever or if I th toss the coin or if I pull out the card four times, how many different ways can I get exactly two successes? There are six different ways to get exactly two successes from four trials. Now of course we're going to be looking for a faster way to do that because... This question might get much larger. It might say something like, if I roll the dice eight times, how many ways can I get five successes? And no one wants to draw a tree diagram with eight rolls of the dice and have to do what we just did for heaps and heaps of, of different um, di of heaps and heaps of different values. So we need a faster way. One thing that you can use is this triangle over here called Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle and the way that Pascal's triangle works is that you start with the number one 
and then you on the second row you write one and one again and then you start uh, adding numbers you write one all the way down as your first number and as your last number but then every other number is this number and this number added together so one plus one is two and that goes there one plus two is three now I might just show you so Pascal's triangle the way that we work it out one 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 and then we start going to work we add these two numbers together one plus one is two one one add uh, one goes on the outside add these numbers together three add these numbers together three and one add these numbers together we get a six add these numbers together we get a four four a one a one and we can keep going like this right, 10 10 5 and 1 you can see it's symmetrical so that makes it a little bit easier on us uh, it's that's Pascal's triangle. Okay. So now you know how to draw it if you ever need to draw it. Uh, now, the way that Pascal's triangle is uh, numbered is that we call this row 0, row 0, and then row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, 7, 8, 9. We've got 10 rows here. Uh, it looks like there's 11, but that's because row 1 is called row 0. Confusing. Okay, so if you want to know the answer to this question, if I roll the dice four times, how many different ways can I get exactly two successes? You only need to go to the fourth row because that's how many trials we're doing. And then you need to count in. But when you count in, again, you start at zero. So there's one way that you can get zero successes. And you can see here's the one way that you can get zero successes. Failure, 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 failure. There's actually four different ways that you can get one success. And here's the jackpot. Here's the thing that we were talking about. There's six different ways that you can get two successes in four trials. Now, uh, I'll show you another one here. And while I'm doing that, I'll also show you a, a new piece of notation that you're going to use here. Okay, so the new notation we're going to learn about is the letter, uh, where'd my thingy go, is the letter C. Okay, and that stands for combinations. So if we wanted to write this question uh, and get rid of the dice, just write it as a purely mathematical question, we could write it the following way, 4C2. That says that given four trials, how many different ways can we get two successes okay so given four trials how many different ways can we get two successes the answer to that is six we've already worked that out now a, a second question so question that was question one that we've already done now question two not going to talk about dice or coins or anything we're just going to write it purely mathematically uh, nine uh, four Okay, so this says, given nine trials, how many different ways can we get four successes? Given nine trials, how many different combinations are there that give us four successes? And the easiest way to do that is to use, or the second easiest way to do that is to use Pascal's triangle. Now we go down to row nine. Remember, this is row zero. So row zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is row 9, and then we need to count 4 in. So remember, this is 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there is our answer. Given that we've performed 9 trials, 9 rolls of the dice, how many different ways can we get 4 successes, 4 sixes? The answer is 126. Imagine trying to draw that with a tree diagram. Okay, uh, super long video, but one more thing we need to look at. Now, if I can find my, my mouse again, here we go. Okay, the last thing you need to do is to know how to do this on your calculator. Okay, now your calculator will look something like this. Now, you can type 9C4 directly into your calculator to give you the answer. The way that you do it, you go to Option. 
uh, arrow across until you see this probability click probability and you're interested in this NCR okay you can see it just makes the letter C appear now I'm going to use my arrow to go behind the C and type the number 9 and I'm going to go forward from the C and type the number 4 and voila 126 there's four different uh, there's 126 different ways that we can get four successes from nine trials Whew. okay long video guys I hope you've taken lots of notes here hopefully in a more um, more clever way than I've done on the board here today learnt a lot of stuff first of all I'll just get out of here how do I get rid of this calculator okay uh, we talked about what binomial distribution was. Then we went through a question and used a tree diagram to figure it out. But then we found there was a slightly different way to do it using Pascal's triangle. Um, and you also learned how to draw Pascal's triangle while you were at it. Um, and we found the number of combinations using Pascal's triangle. And then finally, we grabbed our calculator. And we can do that on our calculator now. Great, big lesson. Thanks for watching and in the next one we'll start doing some uh, probability stuff.